Hi everyone, Christine here. And today I'll be focusing on these small vintage style books. Um, these kits are each different and they have some real charm to them and I'm absolutely enchanted by them and I hope you like them and can find a place to use them in your journaling life. So let's take a look at these, the kits that I have done. We have Birds, compiled by Lolly Beauchat Joyner. We have a gilded, beautiful Victorian cover and it is the Baskin Book of Victorian Verse. The original Milk and Eggs Farmhouse cookback, Cookbook published by Tamara Milling Company in Thurston, Vermont. Flowers, compiled by Edith Christensen Fox. A lovely, simply hand-tooled cover. And this is the one that started it all. This is the Bromberger's Academic Essays on the Political Importance of the Role of Agricultural Diversity in Outlying Regions of Rural Iowa. And it's been edited by Rosemary Christensen. So no offense to Iowa or agriculture or academic essays, but this is not a book I would like grab off the shelf. And that was the whole point. Um, this is the book in which I keep or will keep my passwords and usernames for different websites and accounts. And I use a system like this currently, but just not in a cute little book. And it works for me because unlike a notebook where you have to write it and it stays on that page, um, this gives me a lot more flexibility. I can write the platform, the username, I can change the password several times before the sheet is useless. There's room on the back for notes and that's, that's how I do it. So I created this for that purpose. And I created them slightly smaller in this case so that you can get four on a sheet if you wanted to print this version. Frankly, you could just use plain paper in here. So there, that's what did it. And then of course I looked at that and said, okay, well, what if, how about, and here we go. So this one will hold photos. And I made sure that it will hold four by six photos. This one is, has seeds in it for planting, um, planting information. And so here's some planting um, notes that I made. And then I just slit the card and there are indicators on the card that I provide in the kit to show you where for a standard size, um, envelope, seed envelope, where you might put it. And then milk and eggs. Well, you know, of course, this is going to be a Christmas present for somebody this year, actually for several somebodies this year. I think I have a lot of family recipes that are going to get shared in a, in a um, vehicle like this. This one has love letters and vintage postcards. And this one, I think, is my favorite because in it are pocket companions and they fit in here really nicely. And so I could have even more secrets secret. So that's what we're doing. Um, again, I just fell in love with them. And I just kept making them and coming up with different ideas. And if you've got ideas for how they can be used um, or ideas for themes you'd like to see in the future, let me know. But that's what we're making today. And it's super easy. So all you need to know is you're going to print a cover, some book and paper and then the pocket itself. So that, that's it. And the things you need to provide other than obviously glue and scissors and knives and rulers would be a piece of cardboard. And this is off the back of that uh, mixed media pad I finished up when I was doing eco printing last week. And this is obviously a Triscuit box. So cereal boxes, um, a few of them glued together. Um, this one and this one, these are both made of Cheez-Its and Triscuits. Um, and you can see they make no difference to how they look or appear or their sturdiness of them. In fact, they're actually sturdier than the chipboard I used to make the originals. So that's just something to think about. It's recycling and it's a great use for this material. So that's it. I hope you like it. I hope you make a bucket of them. And if you do, of course, let me know. And any ideas and uh, suggestions you have, please share them. But beyond that, let's get to work. All right, so we're ready to make this cover. And so I've printed it out and on the back of it, I've transferred, these are the marks that show you where you want to put the boards for the book. Um, so the spine would be here, so on and so on, but it has to be on the other side to be helpful. Um, so what I've done is I've transferred them to the other side. I just held it up to a window. If you have a light box, that's great, but the window works. And so now I know exactly where I'm going to want to put these boards. So let's get to doing that. So I always start with this spine. I'm using Fabri-Tac. Um, I have done this with 
uh, basic white glue, PVA glue. I've watered it down a little bit, um, depending on how gooey your glue is. Um, I find that that works best, and I've just brushed it on. Um, I brushed it on one board at a time. But this, I find, is a little faster, and um, I don't know if there's any sturdier. So there, I'm lining up my spine with these lines, just kind of getting them generally close. And I clearly used too much glue, but that's Christine's way. So now I'm going to do the same. Hopefully use a little less glue. But you want a good, a good bond. Um, and I do find that when I use this glue, um, what I like about it is the ability to move it around a bit for a while before it dries. But sometimes I can feel the, um, the glue on the, on the cover side. So I'm doing the same thing, just lining it up, getting it as even with the spine as I can. And, you know, that's important that you have your cover and spine even, particularly on the bottom where it's going to sit. And now I'm going to give this all a good rub. And then I'm going to flip it over and rub from this side. I'll come back and make sure nothing has moved too much. You know my head's getting in the way a little bit here. I'll try and avoid that. But I like to be able to see this part. So same thing here. Get some glue on here. And again, make sure the alignment is with the outside. So basically, we want to make sure that our spaces here are even. Mine looks a little narrow, so I must not have put that line on the back where it should have been, because you definitely want them even. Oh, it does look like it's even. I think it's an optical illusion. And that my bottom, my spine was not straight. <laughs> so again, this is more of an issue because this pattern has a straight, yeah, has straight edges in the design, so you really do want to try and have them aligned straight. So kind of squint at it and see. Okay. And again. Okay, so does not look straight on the bottom and it is not so I'm going to move it up a little bit just a smidge okay so now no 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 now we can trim these corners and what I normally do is just come in and leave a little bit don't take it to the board itself because we'll tuck that in to make sure that there's adequate coverage Oop, i don't need quite that much okay and then it's that okay so now you should give it a little bend here just to get it in, prepare it for its next phase. Now I often, especially when using a paper bound um, binding like this, I will put a piece of this Tyvek tape and I just want to kind of eyeball, you don't want more than than the, the length of the cover. And it's stickier than all oh, get out, so just know that. I put this on, and this is just a little extra reinforcement 
for the, yeah, speak, Christine, for the hinge. Jesus. Sorry, didn't mean Jesus, but you know what I mean. Okay, so now we could start um, going down. So that is just simply, you can choose, start at the top, start the size, whichever you like. You definitely want a good bead of glue on the edge so that you could get a good, good contact and a nice straight edge on your book. So then I typically will take something like the bone folder and rub it and just keep, keep doing that until you think you have encouraged it to stick. And then continue. Yeah, I just cleaned my bone folder, took a little acetate to it, got all the glue off it. That was long lasting. Okay, that was a lot of glue. But there too, it's, in this case, it might be a little better have a little more glue than a little less. You want to stick it. Now it's going to be funky sticking to this, and you'll see what I mean. Um, sometimes it's easier just to use tape, um, two sided tape in this area. Let me wipe that off because that's just disgusting in excess. Okay, so then keep doing this, keep doing this, and give it a bend just again to let it have a little preview of where it's expected to go. I wonder what that meant. Okay, so same thing here, good long bead along the edge. And then too much glue again on the rest. Don't use as much glue as I do. And give it a good swipe all the way around. Now if things go well, these should line up more or less. And watch the glue ooze out again. Give it a little in each of the hinge areas. All right, too much glue, way too much glue at these corners. So let's bend it. Bend it. You can see here, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes at the tie back area, it doesn't um, stick as well as it does to the fibrous cardboard. So now we're just going to encourage it further. You can see it's going to pucker a little when we bend this up. But that's okay. It will all be fine in the end. All right. Well, I was a little crooked on this side. Pretty good on that side. Let's see if we can compensate for that as we go on. So now we just have to do the, the sides. And for that, we want to kind of bash the corners down. I was a little stingy on this side. So now same thing, less glue this time, but an adequate amount. And fold it up. mildly excessive but for this corner it's actually going to help me because I was a little cheap with the paper I trimmed it a little too tight so we're still going to do our thing here give it some bend oh silly me let's do our little corners 
So much for cleaning the bone folder. Some of this is going to get glued over anyway. So let's boogie. Okay. All right. That was a more sufficient amount of glue. So as you can see, I was a little crooked on my front, but just a little. There's the book cover. And we do want to continue to remind it what we expect. That's going to go there. And then you come on the other side and you want to feel in here. I'm going to even bend it up a little. There we go. And you want to go very lightly with this process, especially on the outside, because you want to not rip it. And remember, this is just paper. So I just want to give it a good, ah, beautiful. Okay, so next we make a couple of decisions. So I'm going to turn this off for a second while I get some more supplies, and then I'll be back and we will continue with the book. While we wait for the uh, end papers to print, I am going to ink my edges because I want this book to feel like it has sat on the shelf forever. One thing also, something I've mentioned before, that to add age and also protect the corners, um, tap them down a little bit. This way they can't catch, like this corner is, is sticking out a little bit. There's a point here and I would like that to be flush and rounded and again there's nothing sharp about time and I do that in all the corners to give the appearance of age. I'm doing this without my glasses on too so I have no idea if I've overdone it. So let's see, that looks good. I may come back in the end and do it. But now, having done that, I'm going to do the edges of this book and all the places that would have been kissed by history. Nice. I purposely am not inking the file images because if you don't want ink, there won't be any. It is your call. I just happen to like the effect of kind of accentuating the corners, uh, the edges rather, and giving that aged appearance or accentuating the aged appearance. Okay, now I'm going to grab the end papers. So I chose this marble design, <clears throat> excuse me, because I thought it was a nice complement to what's going on on the outside. So now we just need to trim it. So I'm providing a full sheet um, and you can trim it to the size that's appropriate because each of our books are going to be slightly different. No matter how precise I try and make the files, we're all gonna cut a little bit differently and glue a little bit differently. So now the idea is you want to cover all of this and we're going to do that looks like nine and a half will do it for me as a width and six and three eighths which is actually the um, no the thing is six and a half. Okay so that makes sense. So what did I say? Nine and nine and a half? Just about just shy of nine and a half by six and three eighths. So I'm going to go cut this 
I'm going to cheat and just use the paper cutter. Okay, so I've trimmed down the papers that will act as our end papers. And I'm providing this sheet as a full page um, so that you can measure yourself. Um, your, your book, all of our books are going to be a little bit different in terms of how we cut and glue. And so this way, if yours is a little bit off um, from mine, I haven't given you a sheet that's going to wind up too small. So I think that's good. That'll work great. Okay, so now we're just going to glue this in. And I always start with the spine so that we can give a little added attention to the, the hinge. So let's put this on. Oops, a little messy there. Let's come down here and you can see depending on how your paper cutter cuts maybe there's a bias one way or the other and I'm thinking if your page doesn't fit as perfectly as you like you might flip it around so in this case the difference really made a difference because now it appears far more aligned than it did. So now we do our burnishing and now we just come in glue the rest so again you want to get it out near the edges but the glue will ooze out as we've seen so you don't need to get too close and you can always come back in and slip a little skinny glue in I find doing it this way you get a little more control over that hinge area than if you just glue it all down at once because now as we begin this I'm going to first just gently ever so gently remind this page too that it's going to have to bend and so I bend it up a little and give it a little Smack with the bone folder in that hinge, along that hinge. See what I mean? Yeah, you won't be without an abundance of glue. Learn from me. Use less glue. Okay, so there's that. You just need to keep looking and making sure <laughs> that all your glue oozes out appropriately. Same thing on this side. Here comes my neighbor on his lawnmower. He owns the 12 acres directly behind my house. And he's getting rid of yard debris today. I don't blame him, it's a really nice day. My husband's probably going to do a similar thing. But I can hear his lawn tractor coming. And you probably will too in a second. This glue does not want to come out. There we go. All right. It looked like I used a lot more glue than I did because it wasn't coming out. All right, so then give it a little fold here. Just again to get it prepared for what's ahead. See, that's a little bit, there we go. And now, good. And then burnish as is appropriate. Okay, so now, yeah, that's going to happen and we need to coax the pages. To stick where we want them. There we go. Great. Oh, that little 
little encouragement needed there. Yeah, so my glue, my page wound up coming up a little, a little wider. See here, it's all the way to this edge, which is fine. It's better that, I think, than short, but I might go in and try and get a knife in there and slice it a little. Remembering, however, to put something protective in between this paper and that cover. So what should that be? A piece of cardboard would be great. This will, this will work great. See what I'm doing? I'm just going to take a little bit of this off underneath the whole thing. It's honestly just barely a whisper of paper. Yeah, I'm going lightly so I don't cut through everything. And just make sure that this little piece comes off. There we go. And pull this back out. And I went a little farther than I needed to, but that's okay. And now it's a little shorter. But you get the idea. Now I could even up that side, but I'm not going to. Okay, there we have it. Our cover is done. And now I just have to make the innards. And then we're going to do that now. Okay, so now I've printed the fake pages, the fake page edges and the end paper, um, kind of mimicking end paper. And now we need to score and cut this out. And I didn't cut it out ahead of time because I do want to share with you um, some of the techniques for this, this part, which is simply anywhere there's an intersection, you want to score. Okay, so I'm going to line this up here. I'm going to use the skinniest little guy I have on this stylus, and I'm just giving it a score. So, let's make it straight. Again, anywhere there's an intersection. So this meets this, you're going to score it. And that goes for the whole the whole sheet pretty simple I didn't do the middle or this edge I'm operating a little slowly today it was not a good night's sleep I'm not sure why there's no reason for it. Okay, so now we need to cut everything out. So a couple of things. Um, I'm going to do it with a knife. You could do it on a paper cutter. You could do it with scissors. But since you really do want these as straight as possible, you might find that a knife is your best choice. Here. And you also notice when I cut, I'll, I'll turn things around instead of just moving the ruler over to the next line. And that's an old habit from when I used to create uh, photo mats on my, you know, manually. And I know I am more likely to make an error cutting away from the ruler than into the ruler. So I always want to make the least important part on the right side. Um, so like here, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to do it this way versus doing it this way. It's also better for me because with the, the artwork underneath the ruler, I can anchor it a little bit more. I can keep it pressed down. But you have to know which way are you likely to go off course. And perhaps you don't go off course. Um, I have often, not often, but enough times. You only need to learn once, right? Okay, so this part 
we're going to cut this area out. So I'm going to come to here. I'm going to cut this out. I'll show you why in a second. that's gone. These are going to cut out and these are going to cut. So now here we could just kind of wing it. We don't need the ruler for that. I am going to use the ruler for this because it will be a visible edge. And I want it straight. And same with here, first we're going to just slice these areas apart. So a slice here and here on both sides. And here, and now there I am just moving this over. But it's a very simple cut, so I should be able to handle it. Okay, so now what we want to do, all right, so here I have a little bit of white showing. I'm probably going to want to remove that. But more importantly, we want to sort of miter this edge, this flap here, just to make life simple because we're going to glue to it. So you don't have to be fancy. You don't have to measure. Just get it to a point where it's not... Okay, that was a little bit too generous, but that's okay. It really doesn't. Honestly, honestly, it does not matter. It does not get seen in the end. So you can see I'm making just a little tab, and it would have been easier for me to do the other side had I done that, flipped it over. Okay, so now we're all set. One thing I should have mentioned is this area, you could have scored all the way across. Um, because what we're going to do now is actually fold this flush, these little tabs. We're going to fold flush. All this is going to do, and it's, I say all, it's not a minuscule amount of um, usefulness. It is a good thing that this now, when I first made this version, this is a single single sheet, single strand of um, single ply of 65 pound cardstock. And I'm thinking given enough usage, it, it could begin to, to wear a little bit more. So by just using the paper that's still in the, in the kit, I've just now reinforced that edge. So we're gonna glue that down. We might as well do it now. A little bit of glue there. And here. You can cut them off if you want. If you think how you're going to use the book does not require the reinforcement, it's fine. I mean, it, it works fine without that flap. But I just thought in this version, I would give it a go. All right, so now let's fold on our scores everywhere that we've scored. And we are going to bone fold it as well. Okay, so now let's tighten up those creases. Now this side, we also, we want to glue this down before we assemble because we're going to cut it there too. This is just the front side. It's this area here. I don't know if you could see in here how there it's folded over so that this is a reinforced area. And again, it's 
just a good way to protect the paper from having too much wear. Okay, so now this is also the point at which we make the thumb, the thumb, thumb hole. So I'm going to stick this on here to about the center. I'm going to mark there. And we're going to cut that really any size that you like. There we go. Okay, so now we just glue. We're going to glue this. Hello, worm. We're going to start with this little tab. And this little tab. And we're going to glue the short side up. So the, the front. This will wind up being the back. Or glued to the back. Cover. So now, again, just you want them as straight as you can. You might have to hold it for a second. Okay, and now we glue this to this. I'm going to see if in my design I can get this um, folded down area to come a little further down. Um, but I don't know that I can. I'm just working with the paper that's available. So now we're going to glue this. Remembering not to go up to the top because this is exposed. So we don't want glue all over it. And do, 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 do. And again, we want them straight, you know, nice straight corners as much as you can. And then keep your finger under it for support and get that burnished down. So the other side, same thing, remembering not to go too far up. not to use too much glue. And so there we go. You want to straighten it all up. Now why is that one so much bigger? There we go. So it's still a little bit bigger. I don't know why. It was poor cutting, I guess. I don't know. So pay attention to that. I have to see that I cut the um, Cut this, this side too small or that side too big. One does not know. All right, so there's a little pocket envelope that's going to hold all the lovely pieces. And you want that part of the envelope or the pocket to be on the inside spawning area because that's how you're going to keep it from things coming out. So then it's just gluing this to this. And you can see it's going to look like paper. Yeah, see this one? A little, a little miscut there on my, hat, my, uh, my part. I don't know if I can fix that now. Simply, I think I could. I'm just going to take this apart and cut that. Cut this. It, the problem is it's not that this is keeping it. From, no, the problem is that this flap is just I cut it too short. So. Be aware of that. I'm just going to stick it back, back down. Mm, I'm not sure. Let me see. Let's try it. Now that I just stuck it back down, we're going to unstick it back down. I'm going to come and take some of this off. And see if I can't get a better fold. And look at that, I can. So now, still need it to line up. Now that we have like toasted the glue. Let's give it a little more juice, then I can move it around some more. Right now this glue is pretty, pretty dried up. Ta-da! 
And we're going to give that a second to dry sufficiently. And the thing to, so I want to keep that edge nice and tight. And keep your finger under it and burnish it. All right, so now we do a test fit, and it's always smart to put it in the book ahead of time and see. That's good. That's good. And see where exactly you want to line it up, <clears throat> excuse me, on the end papers. And again, with this glue, you have all sorts of um, adjustment time. So then it's just give this a good dose. Don't overdo it. And I realized that I could have left this panel white, but this way you're going to get a little bit of extra. Actually, I might leave this panel white. So if, if you get this kit and this panel is white, it just makes sense. I don't need to put the artwork there. I'll think about if there's a reason why I should, other than it gives you a little bit more marbled paper, but you have that already. So then, you stick it in your book, close it up, adjust it to how you like it in terms of where it's sitting. And there you go. Da, da, da. So I think if anyone saw this book sitting on the shelf, they would not think. Let's look in there. I think that's where they hide their passwords. I'm going to come in here. Just all the way down. There. Okay, so then the other thing is this is 65 pound cardstock that I've used for these and that's all I've done with them. Um, I'm going to try the 110 and see if I think it makes a meaningful difference. I mean obviously it's going to be sturdier but I don't know if it's necessary. And not everybody has 110. So then of course before we finish we're going to give us some love especially down there where I'm a little bit over, but it just makes it look like the pages are a little bit beat up, which is great. Same with here. I'm going to come here and just dirty things up a little. There you have it. All right, so here's a second book in this series. Um, and I have two more that I'm working on. So by the time you see this, there'll be some other designs to play with. And um, the, the, the covers do tend to flop a little in the beginning. I would just put something on. I've put 10 pounds on this, on this one to keep the cover down, which will stay down when there's gravity. Um, so just know that, that you can weight these down just like books. Obviously, be mindful of how much weight you put on the pages because they're fake um, but now you can take your photos these are sized also for photos and or your cards your recipe cards and the password cards anything you want can go in here and it will look like a fake book so thanks for being here we'll see you next time <laughs>